Welcome to another very iconic and popular poker room on the strip. It's the Aria Room. What's going on guys? Hope you're having a great day. Back at it with another Bankroll Challenge video. Last time we played at Bellagio and today I asked my Instagram followers again, where should I go? Everyone picked Aria. So there's that going on. Let's see how today goes. Hopping into, I think they have one three. A lot of places now just have one three. One two isn't really a thing anymore as, or it's not as popular anymore, but we are currently up 30, $800, give or take. So it's 1200 bucks more to go on this bankroll challenge, hoping things keep trending in the right direction. And we're gonna hop in there in the streets whenever my name gets called. There's like five tables running and I'm like 10th on the list. So I'm gonna hang out for a little bit here, but uh, you guys don't have to wait with me real time. Let's snap into getting my chips. Let's start off this Aria 1-3 game. It's a $300 max, a true 100 big blind game. And let's get into it with the first hand. We're playing six handed on this new table with 10-9 of spades. In the hijack here, I open things up to $10 and only the player to my left makes the call. So we're going to a flop out of position, which comes King Jack 7 to hearts. Nice to flop a double gut shot straight draw here, and action's gonna go check check as I'm out of position. The turn comes the three of spades, and I decided to bet close to the size of the pot here. Certainly in the larger stakes here, it would probably be worth a lot more, but anyways, I decided to bet $20 here on a board that should favor me as a preflop aggressor. I have lots of equity on. For $20, we go, and he makes the call. River comes in ace, so this is certainly a card I want to bluff on. Of course, I didn't get there with the straight, so I'm standing with 10 high, but I'm trying to fold out, I guess, a king or jack, and I blast out for pot again for $60. Starting off this session hot with a relatively big bluff. It is a 20 big blind bet. Anyways, I don't want to be down $100 to start this session, and luckily, my opponent folds, so I found a really good run out there to bluff on, although I didn't get there with the straight, like I said said, I will still take the pot down. In the next interesting hand, I pick up ace 10 offsuit in the big blind, and there are two players who limp it over to me. Of course, I am not one to limp and check my options, so I raise it up to $20 out of position. The first limper ends up folding, but surprisingly, I see the button player make the call, so heads up, out of position again. The flop is ace 10 6 to spades. Look, you've seen me do a lot of checking out of position, and maybe there's not as much merit to do so here in this spot with such a strong hand, but I decided to do it here and check, hoping to let my opponent bet here and I could check raise, but my opponent checks this one back. Turn comes the queen of spades. The spades draw does come in if he had one, but I'm definitely going to be going for value, and once again, I size up close to the size of the pot, about $40 here. And my opponent now thinks about this decision and ends up making the call, which is great because maybe I can get stacks in. My opponent only has about $100 behind this bet. So looking to just go for all of it on the river if it's not a spade. The river comes in ace. So hitting a full house, certainly a good feeling. And like I said, he's only got about $100 behind. So it seems like a pretty easy decision here to announce all in. Assuming a queen will make the call. And if he somehow does have the last ace, then I'll certainly get paid as well. He takes his time, looks at his cards, and it looks like he's not super happy about this situation and then ends up folding. <sighs> Unfortunate here. I guess at 1-3, I could bet a little bit smaller, like $50, and be very unbalanced with bluffs and value. But alas, that's how this hand played out. I tried to go for all of it, stack my opponent, and he got away. This next spot here, you're going to see me do something a little bit different. I have fives in plus two. Player to my right limps in for $3, and I decided to over limp. I think at these stakes, it's profitable to just limp in with small pocket pairs here so this becomes a four-way limped pot we're going to a flop of jack five three two hearts and action is going to check it over to me flopping middle set you know i love this spot i'm going to bet out 15 dollars, trying to build a pot here and only the player to my right who limped originally makes the call so we're going to play in position and once again hoping to build a pot the flop is the seven of spades Brings in a backdoor flush draw, so the board is pretty connected. And my opponent actually decides to lead for $20, taking a relatively weird line. And look, I'm certainly not going to be just calling here. There's plenty of draws, and if she has a jack, then I'm going to get a lot of value, I think. I decide to raise my strong hand here to 80 And upon my raise, my opponent actually decides to re-raise again? She decides to, I don't really get it, but min raises to $140. 
Very, very interesting. It certainly looks strong, but uh, putting this 3-bet here on this turn, I look at my opponent's stack. She has about 140 left behind, so she pinned half of her stack into the middle, and I have the option to go all in, and I think that's what I'm going to do. 4-bet all in on this turn for $280 total, and she snap calls with pocket jacks? What? Okay, I have one out to improve on the river, and it, of course, does not come. I don't sun run that hard in the 1-3 streets, but a um, very, very peculiar way that my opponent played the hand, but she ends up getting all of it in a very cooler situation set over set. So, uh, that's unfortunate. I double my opponent up and add on for $300 more. Not great for the bankroll challenge, but I guess coolers do happen. The very next deal we get involved, though, so let's play more poker. I have ace, nine of diamonds, and the same woman limps in for $3. Obviously, after seeing she's capable of limping very strong hands, I'm going to go for some of my money back, I guess. I isolate and raise to 15 my opponent calls. The flop comes king, 10, deuce, two diamonds. And my opponent decides to lead this time into the pot for $15. Okay, I think it seems profitable to play in position here to just make the call. If I hit my draw, then I can go for more money. And let's see a turn. The turn is a seven, not the diamond I wanted to see. She bets again, but this time for 20. I mean, okay, I've got ace high. I have the flush draw. I'm not going to raise. Not sure what's going on here, but for 20 bucks, happy to make the call. And we see the river, which comes a queen. Totally bricked out. My opponent bets $20 again. I mean, I've got ace high. I, I, I can't call the $20, although it seems very, very strange for me to call flop and turn then fold to 20 on the river. But I'm not going to give her more money. I can't beat this opponent tonight. So I sheepishly fold. And uh, yeah, bad times here losing in the 1-3 streets. All right, I just got wrecked in the 1-3 the streets, unfortunately. I have a very interesting predicament, one that doesn't really affect you much. But I'm ending the 1-3 session now, not because I'm down, I am down, but I'm pausing it, taking a break, because I get called for a 10-20 game, not a typical 10-20 game, and it's for the vlog. I'm going to have to play it over a 1-3. When the opportunity arises, I've got to get a bigger game, like I'm buying in for 40 it's gonna be a big game. So uh, I'm pausing the 1-3. You will already have seen the vlog that I've, I'm gonna record right now. And that's the predicament I'm in right now. So that's it. Quick take a quick break. I'll see you guys the next time I'm at Aria and I play 1-3 to resume this session video. But those are the four hands. Um, I played for only 45 minutes, 50, 50 minutes. In for 600, out for 290. Set over set. Haven't had that in a while. I guess I'm just lucky it's at 1-3 and not in this 10-20 game I'm gonna hop into. So the bigger game breaks out and we're hopping back into the 1-3 streets again here at Aria. And starting off the second session of the day, I pick up queen 10 offsuit on the button and the only player opens it up to $10. This opponent looks like he's a 1-3 pro, but when the hijack and cutoff make the call, I have a very bad and vulnerable hand, but in position, Let's flick in $10 in here and we get the big line to call as well. So multi-way to a flop, we go of queen, jack, eight, rainbow. Top pair, gut shot, straight draw. Not loving the situation multi-way, but certainly okay with the flop. The only gun player decides to c-bet $20 into the field. And when action folds to me, I can only expect this opponent to be quite strong when he does this. I mean, he's betting multi-way out of position into a lot of different players. So this is a hand in candidate that I'm never going to fold, although I don't feel great about it. I make the call for 20 and we're going heads up to the turn, which comes a three. My opponent checks now, and I really don't see a reason to bet here because if I bet, I only think I get better hands to call. So I decided to check this one back. Wouldn't be surprised if he had a better queen. We're off to a river, which comes a king. That's not a good river card because now I don't think I'm ever going to win this pot. And when my opponent fires out $65... I think I gotta let this one go. Seems like a pretty easy fold. Don't expect my hand to be good ever here. Didn't think my hand was good on the flop and certainly not good now on the river. All right, so this uh, video and session hasn't gone great. Trying to rebound, I pick up King Jack offsuit in the small blind. 
There are three players who limp it over to me, and I'm going to put in a raise here, although I could certainly limp, but I'm stuck a pile of money, and the only way to win the money back is by making big pots. I raise up to $22, and I get the low jack and button to call. We're going heads up to a flop of king four five rainbow. Here, my exact hand loves this board as I have top pair, but my total range probably doesn't and will probably miss a lot of the time. For those reasons, multi-way out of position, I check. The low jack player bets out $25 and the button player calls the 25. So gonna proceed with some caution here on this board against two other opponents. I call as well. Turn comes a six, so it does introduce some straights and two pair combos. I check again, the low jack bets $125 now at this point. Sounds like a really chunky bet. And when the button calls the 125, I mean, definitely lots of alarm bells sirening here at this point in my head. And I just don't think King Jack's gonna win. I mean, lots of two pair combos, some sets out there. And when the low jack player bets twice into the field multi-way, and this time for such a large sizing, it's hard to find hands that I beat two players with. So I'm gonna let this one go and fold top pair. We get to hypothetically sweat out a river, which comes a three. Low jack player checks. The button goes all in. And when the low jack snap calls with eight, seven for the nuts, he ended up turning the gut shot straight draw. That is going to win. We never found out what the button had, but it seemed like he had a good enough hand to go all in on this river here. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to get out of the way with the King Jack. Don't know what I'm doing playing bad hands. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, trying to crawl out of the complete hole from the first two sessions here. I have ace queen off suit in the cutoff and I raise it up to 10. I get the button to make the call here and we're off to a flop of king king seven two diamonds. Totally whiffed out of position against my opponent. Action's going to go check check. Turn now comes the 10 of diamonds here. So I have a combo draw and considering the board favors me a lot more. I can certainly play a lot of strong hands this way. So now I set to bet out $15 with increased equity. And for 15, my opponent makes the call, which is a little interesting. I can't imagine him to be super strong after checking back the flop, but here we are. The river comes the nine of hearts. It's a complete brick. Only thing is that queen jack is now a straight. And I think I'm going to apply pressure here to my opponent here. I have a queen. Queen jack is essentially like the nuts. And I don't think my opponent ever has a king in this spot checking back flop. So I bet out $50. And for 50 here, my opponent tanks, thinks about his decision for a while. So seems like I've put a 10 into a rough spot. Definitely a bluff catching situation for a 10 and definitely won't be comfortable. But when he ends up making the call and flips over King Jack, geez, how does he have that hand? That hand clearly overkill. And that's going to wrap up my night. I've been losing basically every single hand I enter. And sometimes you just gotta know it's not your night. You rack up and move on, accepting the L. Fuck, this was not good. This was not a good day at all for me. Very demoralized because I lost a lot of money in the 1-3 streets. It sucks. Uh, the first session didn't go well, set over set, and uh, I lost $310. Second session, also didn't go great, but for like another hour. I just lost a lot. Just kept folding and having to, just didn't win a pot. It was crazy. Uh, I was in the game for $540, and I am uh, currently holding these chips that I don't know what to do with because the line's long, um, for 239 which is an L of 301 That's horrible. That's a horrible, horrible 1-3 session. Two 1-3 sessions that were fat Ls too. So bad, which uh, is really unfortunate now because uh, I thought I was gonna sun run this. Why did I think it would just be an upward graph? But now it brings some hardship into the. Uh... So I lost 600, 611 dollars to be exact. Now I have 611 dollars to make up this one three bankroll challenge, and no more sun running. So there's that. I have to find a way to win it all back. The session wouldn't be true without a loss or two. This was a bad one. At least I can bring you along the ups and downs of the bankroll challenge, which is very relatable. At least. It, you can't sun run every single session. So thanks so much for watching. On to battling in the streets again. I'll see you next time. Peace.